Hey there, friends. Ever heard of a case where somebody got off on a self-defense claim, but still got charged with discharging a firearm inside an occupied building? But first, if you guys would go take a look at my friends Gideon Optics. Gideon has some really affordable optics out there, multi-purpose optics. I've actually been running one of their mediator optics on one of my shotguns here recently, and this thing is taking the full beating of everything. But they have a, a long line of other ones. In fact, I think they're going to be introducing some new optics at SHOT Show this year as well. So go check out my new friends at Gideon Optics. Check them out at GideonOptics.com. Again, GideonOptics.com. You guys will likely remember this case from several months ago where this gentleman who was a DoorDash driver went into kind of a mall area, food court area, to pick up a DoorDash order for a customer. A YouTube prankster came to him, approached him, and got in his space. I'm not saying the guy was in physical danger or anything like that. I'm not a judge and I'm not a jury. Got in his space. There's a little bit of respect that we owe each other out there, and that seems to have been lost. But this is the story if you missed it. Loudoun County jury found Alan Coley not guilty of the most serious charge connected to the shooting at Dallas Town Center. David Kaplan's working this one tonight. You got your hands on the video. What happened here? Yeah, Jim, Tanner Cook's YouTube page has nearly 56,000 followers. Most videos show Cook going to public places and doing some sort of prank that people typically have negative reactions to. We're going to walk you through this video without audio first, then we'll play the whole thing for you. On April 2nd at Dallas Town Center, Cook was being filmed as part of his YouTube page as he walked up to Kali, who was picking up a food delivery. On Cook's phone, he had an automated voice play a vulgar message that was repeated multiple times to Kali, who tells him to get away or he'll call the police, is what it appears to say in the video. Kali tries walking away. Cook appears to follow. Then the lone shot rings out. Here's the full video. What? Kali did have a concealed carry permit. Cook has recovered. Kali was found guilty of discharging a firearm in a public place. Again, not guilty on some of the wounding related charges. His attorneys, Kali, is getting a hearing next month arguing that the verdict should be thrown out on the discharge in public since it was self defense. Today, the Loudoun County Commonwealth's attorney says the force used by Kali, they believe, did not match, match the threat he faced. Now, as the story says, Cole was originally charged with discharging a firearm within a building, aggravated malicious wounding and use of a firearm in the commission of a felony after he shot the prankster, but a jury acquitted him of the last two charges after Coley argued that he acted in self-defense, so that was a successful plea. Though the jury appears to have accepted Coley's self-defense claim, they still convicted him of discharging a firearm in an occupied building. Now, first off, I'm curious what you guys think. Um, I have my own thoughts on this, and I'll give you at least a brief synopsis of that. One of the things that I like to say is the late, great James Brown used to always say, don't start none, won't be none. We hear the F around and find out phrase used all the time, and I think there's a ton of truth to that. When you are willfully invading somebody else's space, and not even because you need anything, because you're playing a prank or a joke. But when you willfully do that, regardless of the situation, you have to understand there are going to be repercussions. I'm not saying that everybody's going to be shot whenever they get in somebody else's space. And that is a serious thing. Make no mistake about it. I value my bubble, my personal bubble, my neutral zone bubble, if you will. When I go out into public, if somebody gets too close to me, whether they're behind me, side of me, or in front of me, I'm going to stick my foot out and back up a little bit. Um, I'll position things in between me and that person. It's not necessarily a danger thing, although the more space you have between you and somebody else, the safer you are. It's, it's math. It's physics, right? But I look at it like a respect thing. I don't want you in my bubble. If I want you in my bubble, I will invite you in my bubble. And I will let it be your decision to enter my bubble. I won't force you into my bubble. This guy 
thought he was going to be cute. And personally, guys, I think he picked on this little guy, the defendant in this case, because he was smaller than him. He wasn't walking up to a six foot six, 275 pound guy. It's like he targeted the smallest guy out there. A bully, if you will, is what he looked like he was doing. He was bullying this guy because he was pretty sure he could get away with it. He didn't think he was going to get shot. And do I think that he was a threat? No, I don't. But I, I don't think he was a threat because I know now that he wasn't a threat, right? This case has already taken place. We know all the facts now. If you have a guy that's a foot or more bigger, taller than you, willfully invading your space, and he's got a little sidekick behind him also, that's never a good sign. But he's getting in your space. He has this stone cold look on his face. No emotion, no laughing, no joking, no reason for you to think that he's playing a game here. None. You have every reason to think this guy means to do you harm. Now, does he mean to kill you? Is he looking to take your life? That's a judgment call you have to make in that split second, right? And that's what Coley did. Coley made that decision. I don't think Coley walk, woke up that morning thinking he was going to shoot somebody. And I think it was, by all reasons that you see here in the video, a good shoot. Would I have shot the guy as a result of this? No, probably not. Do I think it was a good decision? No, probably not. Did he have every right to do it? Yes, yes. He had the legal right to carry his gun. He even had a permit, if you want to uh, reinforce that legality even more, that he could be carrying. Obviously, he has a Second Amendment too, so that means he definitely could carry. But he did have a state-sponsored permission slip saying that he could carry a gun there. He was not a convicted felon. He was not a prohibited person. This guy did everything that he was supposed to do in terms of the law. He did not break one single law. Now, my question is, how in the world do you does a jury justify saying this guy acted in self-defense, meaning that they had to have understood that he feared for his life in order to shoot the guy? So if the jury understood that, which is a really big component in this case, how in the world did they come to the conclusion, yeah, but he shouldn't have fired his gun in an occupied place? First of all, no round went anywhere else. There was nothing negligent or careless about what he did. He shot the guy in the gut. One shot, shot the guy. There was no additional rounds that went off into the food court area. But I don't understand how this jury can wrap their own heads around the fact that they give this guy the benefit of the doubt of defending himself and his own life because if he didn't fear for his life, they would not have allowed him to get off on that charge of self-defense. But they did. So they assumed that this man believed his life was in danger. What did they expect him to do? I, what Was he supposed to throw the hot food on the guy in self-defense? He was defending his own life. And he did everything legal. The Discharging the gun, and that's a tack-on charge, guys. You understand what I'm talking about? A lot of these stupid laws that are on the books are tack-on charges. It's whenever they want to throw the book at somebody for something they've done wrong. In other words, if, if the guy would have been malicious in shooting at the other guy, they would have used this as a tack-on charge. Oh, let's pile on all these incidental BS charges. But this is a tack-on charge, not a primary charge that you would normally charge somebody with, especially one that you let off with a self-defense plea. I would love to know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section down below. First of all, do you think that the jury was right in how they ruled? Whether they, you feel like the guy should have acted in self-defense and if that was a legitimate uh, you know, plea that he made to get off, and do you think that he still should have been convicted on shooting this gun in um, an occupied place, which, by the way, they are appealing that. So I think this is probably going to go away. But this man spent eight months of his life in jail. His life is essentially ruined. Any job he had is gone. I know he was a DoorDash driver, but he could have had a full-time job and been doing this on the side. God knows in this economy, you almost have to have two jobs at least. So this guy's life is ruined. His family, what did his family do, you know? It, it, this is an awful thing to happen to somebody when they did everything that they... There wasn't a law that they broke under 
the circumstances in, in the proper context. There was no laws broken. But the final thing that I will throw at you guys, we talk all the time about getting out of these communist areas. This is Virginia, by the way, that this happened. We talk about how once your representation in Congress at the political level or whichever starts to resemble something that you are not, it's always best if you're within your means to move on, move out to another area, go to an area that works. I know that we sometimes you just can't give up on an area, but sometimes an area is is okay to give up on because it's a lost cause. So we talk about that all the time. This is a byproduct of that. And what I mean by that is you have to understand that, in, just like in Mr. Coley's case here, even if you, based on the context of what is happening at that very moment, even if you do everything right, if you pull that trigger, you will see your day in court most likely. And when you do, guess who will judge you? A jury of your peers. So this is another reason that if you can get out, get out. Because even though you might be that one person and says, oh yeah, they're not going to screw me over. I was born and raised here. I'm staying here and this and that. And, you know, I'm a black sheep in this area. I'm the only one that thinks like I do. That's great. And it's great that you stick to your guns, no pun intended. It's great that that is your philosophy and you don't mind sticking out and being that one person that doesn't think like all the other group thinkers in your area. That is, I, I, I admire that. It's hard to do sometimes. A lot of people cave in those types of situations. However, you always run that risk, even though you're doing the right thing, of winding up where Mr. Coley wound up and having a jury of your peers deciding your fate. And at that point, all those people who don't believe like you do now have a say, unfortunately, in your life and in your future. If you have the opportunity to get out of these blue areas, get out. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.